Hello, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 358. I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph, and today is a very beautiful, sunny Sunday here in the mountains of southwestern PA, where I'm coming to you from at the Mountain House. Um, yeah, it is Sunday, February 7th. So it's a week before Valentine's Day. I probably won't record again before Valentine's Day, so I'll just wish you all the love and happiness that you deserve on Valentine's Day and frankly, every day of the year because you deserve a lot. We all do, especially love and warm caring from ourselves. Okay. Um, hey, if you are new, thank you so much for coming and checking out the podcast. If you have been around for a while, thank you for coming back. Another episode, I really appreciate it and I love reading your comments. So if there's anything that strikes a chord with you today, please feel free to comment in the YouTube comments um, or on, in the Ravelry group in the episode thread or on the Fiber Nymph Dye Works blog in that blog post. Those are all places that you will find the show notes for today. I always, well, not always, I try to always post show notes with links to things I've talked about and um, links to the different sections, timestamps, so that if there's something that you're not interested in, you can just jump to what you are interested in. Um, other ways to stay in touch or at least stay in the know with what's going on, especially with my Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn company. Um, we have a newsletter. You can sign up for that on the website. I have an Instagram account for Fiber Nymph Dye Works as well as my own personal one, which is the at Fiber Nymph account. Um, you're welcome to follow either or both or neither. It's up to you. There's also a Facebook page, which I may or may not continue. There wasn't a loud response of people who said, yes, they depend on that. And I may end up letting that go because um, I, I just don't love Facebook. So anyway, I think that's all of the details I like to try to remember to get out to you. I've been trying to be better about that. My show notes are sitting down here today, so in case you wonder why I keep looking. And I'm going to give you a heads up right now that if you hear a strange humming, rumbling in the background that I'm not able to get rid of during processing, during editing, um, my husband is sandblasting today because of course he is. And that means that the air compressor is running pretty much nonstop. So this was actually the quietest place in the house <laughs> um, with that going on. But you know, he needed to get a motorcycle frame sandblasted and I needed to record the podcast. So we're just making the best of it. And I have my tea here. It actually felt more chilly today earlier when I was getting ready than it does now. I'm a little warm, so I might be losing the shawl eventually, which by the way is the Age of Brass and Steam Shawl. Um, I've never worn it this way before. It's a nice sizable elongated triangular shawl, and I have a shawl cuff around it today, which kind of brings it in under the girls and kind of makes it like a, a bolero almost. I'm really liking it this way. Um, I knit this years ago, like 2000. 14, 15. It's one of my favorite go-to shawls. I take it camping all the time. I wrap up in it. I've been known to wrap up in it underneath my motorcycle garb too, in ex especially cold riding circumstances. But anyway, I pulled it out today because it goes with the top I have on and kind of like it. <laughs> um, the yarn is Stoller and Stoll or Stoller and Shoal. <laughs> can't remember. Limbo, it's a discontinued yarn. I got it years ago and had so many false starts with it before I finally made this project and this was the perfect project for it. So I really love it. Um, I think that's all of the preliminaries. Why don't we get into the actual podcast? I have a lot of projects to show you today and I'm going to try to get through them in a fairly expedited manner without talking like I'm an auctioneer. So I, I, I tend to hurry up a lot my speech whenever I'm realizing I have a lot of things to show you. And most of it's all piled up over here, which is why I'm now looking over there. 
I know you've seen this part of the house before, but in case you haven't watched before, this is our dining room, living room, kitchen area. It's all one big area here at the Mountain House. And I apologize, this lighting behind me isn't optimal, but there's nothing I can do with it. I was sitting here playing, I'm like, well, maybe if I hold my hair out and fluff it out. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too distracting, but it's the best that I could do today. All right, so I've got a whole bunch of finished objects, some of which you never saw as actual works in progress. I've got a couple of works in progress I am going to talk about, though, and then um, just a little bit of other things, including, actually, not just a little bit of other things. I'm going to tell you about those upcoming um, alongs that I've been teasing you with pretty much all year. I finally have the details for those and by the time this is uploaded they will also be um, on both on the website and on Ravelry so you'll be able to find the information both places. Um, yeah so I've got that and then I've got a drawing for you a book and yarn drawing so I hope you'll enjoy that. Then after that, I've got a little bit of shop news, which I seem to be dubbing the state of the studio lately, which I kind of like that name. So maybe that's what I'll be calling it. From here on out, um, I do have some update information for you. And then lastly, I have some favorite things this week that I'm going to share in what we've always called the 10% section. So let's get started, shall we? I have two more, the last two scrappy marled hats or marled scrappy hats however i was calling them that i was doing through january um, as entries into the down cellar studio pigskin parties january um and january interception i was gonna say end zone that doesn't make sense oh today's the super bowl <laughs> you can tell what a huge football fan i am at this point in my life because it's like oh yeah there's some game ball thing happening today, some sporting thing. Super Bowl, today is the actual last day of the pigskin party. But anyway, here are the last two hats. This was the one I was working on when I sh was recording last time because I showed you how I joined my yarns in this one. So this is the one and then I managed to squeak out one more. I actually really like how this one turned out. This was a grouping of very pastel -y colored yarns, which I'm not usually much of a pastel person, but I really kind of like this little grouping. Um, I did have, I think, one or two more groupings of yarn at that point, but I finished this the very last day of January, I think, and even though I could have just kept knitting them because they're, they're um, charity hats is what they're going to be, I'm donating them, I just couldn't do any more of them right now. My hand was starting to hurt for one thing, and I just needed a break. So I think seven of these hats in one month was pretty respectable used up a lot of scraps which was also very exciting there's you can't really see it but there's a project bag there but then there's another one right behind it that's bigger that had been full of scraps at the beginning of January and that's what I used to make all of these hats so I got rid of a lot of just leftover stuff and it felt really good so two more hats for the charity pile um, and they were just my plain vanilla hat pattern. I used US 4s for the brim and 5s for the bodies of the hat. Um, I mainly cast on somewhere between 80 and 88 stitches and then usually increased to somewhere around 96, maybe it was 86 to 88, I don't know. It's in the, the project notes, <laughs> so if you're interested or if you have questions, Leave a comment and I'll be happy to tell you more details. But they're fun. They're just nice beanies. They're not slouchy, really. Um, and I was holding two fingering weight yarns double through all of them, just pretty randomly. All right. Next finished object, which I'm now realizing I totally forgot to bring sock blockers out. This is getting to be a bad habit. But you have seen these on blockers before. It's Bill's socks. I did finish those. And he has deemed them wonderful. He has not worn them yet. I told him I had to show them on the podcast. I know. They look really funny because they're ribbed. So they're all scrunched together. But they're actually ribbed and they're quite wide. He loves ribbed cuffs because uh, they stay up well for him. And he likes very long cuffs. I knit these cuffs about nine and a half inches, which is probably a record, quite frankly. But he really likes them. And so now I can give them to him to wear. Um, this was West Yorkshire Spinners 4-ply, um, 
in the Mallard colorway. I don't remember the number, but it's the Mallard colorway. And then I used their poppy seed four ply as the heels and the toes. And really not much else to tell you about them. I'm glad they're done. I really, really love this colorway. I have, a, I have maybe, I'm trying to remember how much was left, around 30 grams. I don't know that I could get a shorty pair of socks for myself out of that. I could probably if I used the gray again, the poppy seed. So I might do that because I really like this colorway. Um, but those are done. So yay. And again, this is just my plain vanilla two by, is this a two by two rib that I did? Yes. Sometimes I do two by one or three by one. But this was two by two rib um, with a heel flap and gusset and just a regular old toe. Very happy with those. All right, moving on. I have another finished hat for you, which I actually just finished this morning. Okay, where are you? Oh, you're under all the yarn. <laughs> okay. This hat, I, I had the yarn pulled out for this hat. Um, and, okay. all right. So this hat is called, the pattern here, I'll show you the pattern first. It's by We Sheep Knits who is Julia Swart. Sorry, I've met Julia several times. She lives out in the eastern part of Pennsylvania, and I often see her at shows out in that direction. So this is what the hat looks like. I'm gonna to try to show it to you without showing you directions. Isn't that cute? It's called Cloudy with a Chance of Rainbows. And it is written where you're holding two strands of fingering weight plus a strand of a mohair silk. So like my fluff base or kid silk haze. Actually, I used kid silk haze for part of mine. Um, anyway, her, she wrote it so that the brim could be rolled up, but she also gave optional directions if you didn't want that. And I did not want that. So I didn't do a rolled up brim or folded up brim. And it also, um, you know, she has a pom-pom on hers. I am not putting a pom-pom on mine, but I'll show you why in just a minute. So here's mine. It looks very different than hers. But isn't that fun? Oh, it's funny now, in the camera, in this light, I can actually see the divisions of the colors a little bit more clearly than I was seeing them just looking at them. That's interesting. So the yarn that I used for this hat, and I gotta tell you, I love it. It's so soft and squishy and it fits. It's just on the very edge of being a little too big. So depending on how much it stretches while I wear it, it may end up getting tossed in the dryer with a damp towel at some point, but Right now it fits really well. So this yarn down here is the Mountain Tweed BFL, my Fiber Nymph Dye Works Mountain Tweed BFL, just in the plain vanilla. So it's the undyed yarn. And I held it double as the pattern called for. And then I also held a strand of my fluff base, which is my kid mohair and silk um, in the wisp colorway. So that's what is here. Can you see the fluff? Like, oh, look at that fluff. I just love it. So anyway, the pattern is written so that you do the brim and then you do about an inch of that color and then you go into your rainbow colors or whatever colors you're using. And then as you saw in the picture, it was supposed to finish, the crown decrease area was supposed to finish back with this color. Well, I, once I saw these colors work up like this, I knew I just wanted to finish the whole hat in this. So the colors I used for the stripes that don't really look very striped because I marled them are these. This was a set of minis. Let's see if I can get them in the right order. Boop -a -doop. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so here's the order. There's six of them. And I'm completely blanking on the name of the yarn. Do I have it in the show notes? Um, Mill House Designs BFL Tweed. This was a set of six minis that I got as part of a fiber share package a couple of years ago. And I've been waiting for the, just the right project because I didn't know what I wanted to do with them. And this was the perfect project. So here they are. And so for that section, I started with these two and I marled them together. And then the next one I went and I dropped the first one and added the third one. So I was doing these two. Then I dropped this one and went to those two and so on until at the very end I was doing these two and I did these two all the way through all the crown decreases to the end instead of stopping and going back to that natural color. So these are the colors, but just I love how they look. I mean, look how different. Isn't that fun? 
Okay, so it goes this way, actually. Cool. There's a shadow right here. You can't really see it, I don't think, but we have a big beam that runs, and there's a skylight over in the kitchen, and so it's actually casting a shadow. So depending on... There, you can kind of see it on the hat. Do you see that? <laughs> ah, sorry. Anyway, it, it affects the lighting. So I love how this worked up. I held these together with this ball of Rowan Kid, Kid Silk Haze, which is really getting blown out. There, that's a little bit better. Maybe if I put it in the shadow, that's about right. Um, I held it with this the whole way through. So it has this really pretty raspberry kind of color going through. This is actually, I don't remember the number, but it's called Blushes. I have no idea if it's still an active color. I've had it in my stash for a long time, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. And my daughter saw it, and I asked her, I'm like, hey, would you like one of these? Because I've got enough yarn left over, and she does. So I will be making a second one of these. I will be doing some modifications, though. Um, the next one she did ask, well, number one, she said this one's a little too big on her, so I am going to either size down in needles for the brim, which I think might just take care of it, um, I may eliminate some stitches too. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, um, she wanted the colored part to start right after the ribbing. And honestly, in retrospect, had I realized I was not going to go back to the natural color, I probably would have done that for me too. But otherwise, I love it. I absolutely love this hat. The pattern was really well written. I think it's a fun make. I started it yesterday. I finished it this morning. Um, I think it reminds me of a winter sunset and that's what I'm calling it my winter sunset hat so here's the snow here's the sunset I think it's just beautiful I have a pom-pom that would go great with these colors but I don't want to cover up this top part I just think it's too pretty and I, I want to be able to see that I don't want those colors hidden so yep so that is probably my fun favorite project from this whole week or since the last time I talked to you. Oh, we're gonna move into some crochet finished objects. So, I, I think I told you last time I had several projects kind of queued up that I was gonna hopefully start. One of them was a cowl. I do not even remember the name of it right now. It involved fringe though, which obviously is what drew me to it. I, and it was a lot of ribbing and I started it and I did about an inch and I immediately got bored and I thought I can't do this whole shot. <laughs> it's pretty and maybe with different yarn I might have gotten into it. Plus I felt like my gauge was too large. Anyway, I ripped that inch out, but I like the yarn. It's just a, it was a ball of one of a kind colorway um, of my cozy base that I dyed one day with like leftover yarns. So I wanted to use it. So I went, um, I went to a pattern. I don't, uh, did I bring the pattern out? I did not bring the pattern out. It's called the Sea Star, no. Yeah, Sea Star Oceanside, Oceanside Beanie. It's not on Ravelry. Um, I found it on Etsy, and I'm not even sure why I found it on Etsy, because I wasn't searching for hat patterns or any patterns. I think it was just something that was one of those recommended things, and I thought, oh, that's really, really pretty. I may have actually seen it on Instagram or something. Someone might have done it. I don't know. So I went and searched it out and I downloaded it and I thought I have not crocheted a hat and I'm trying to expand my crochet skills so I gave it a go and it wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, as you can tell, let's compare size, okay? Like even to just one of these. It's sort of tiny. Well, maybe not to this. Yeah, it's tinier than that. Oh yeah, it's definitely tinier than that. It turned out quite small. I did go down a hook size from what it called for, only because my eye hook had a pointier end to it than my J hook, which I think is what the pattern called for. And I feel like I'm a loose knitter, so I guess I assumed I'm a loose crocheter, but I may not be. I might be a tight crocheter. I have to keep that in mind for the future. Anyway, the other thing is crochet fabric doesn't really have the same stretch to it as knitted fabric does and that's also something that I had not really recognized because I've not really done this kind of a an accessory before or a garment that needed to really you know fit well those halter tops that I made for Emma last year tied together so they really weren't you know that wasn't a fit thing um, anyway so I didn't really have too many problems with it I think I had one area that I had to rip back 
Um, most of the steps in it, I understood what to do or could intuit what to do. So I felt like I was okay there. These, this section here that has these twisted stitches in it, that was really fun. I like doing that. Twisted crochet stitches are way more fun than twisted knitted stitches. I hate doing like twisted ribbing. <laughs> I don't like that. But this was a lot of fun. And the, the, um, the brim is actually worked this way. And then you pick up stitches around it to do the body of the hat. I could probably say a lot more about this if I was more fluent in crochet, which I'm not. Um, but I am going to try making it again. Uh, basically, the, the pattern, I don't know the name of the designer, it just said by Sea Star Crochet. Um, there was not actually a person's name that I saw. Um, it, the pattern does note that it's easily sized up or down just because it's a repeat of two stitches. So it would not be hard at all to make it larger. So I am going to give it another go. I think I'm going to try to use a brighter, more fun color of yarn for it this time. But this is going to go in my, my charity bin to my pile because um, I think it was a fun hat and it was a good experience. Again, I'm really enjoying expanding my crochet skills. So yeah, that's another project that I finished. Oh, my other, oh, I was going to bring a cup over here. Hang on. Okay, my other crocheted finished object are a couple of cup cozies. And the pattern that I used is by Jennifer Lassonde, who is from Down Cellar Studio. She has the Down Cellar Studio podcast that I just mentioned before. And she designed this, it's called the ball, ball band. I printed this out on used paper and I accidentally, actually the paper was printed already on both sides so I'm not sure why it was in the pile. <laughs> so I can't really show you the front page but I think there is a, um, yeah here's a pic, nope, that's not it, here, alright, I don't want to show you the, it is a free pattern actually on Ravelry, but it's for a ball jar if you use those to drink out of. Um, or any other glass that's approximately that same three, three and a half inch size, it would work great. So I don't use ball jars, but I was having a conversation with my mom recently, and she said that her husband really likes the um, beer bottle cozies that I made him for Christmas, but she was saying that, you know, in the evening before, when they're getting ready for bed, they always have a nightcap, and he has this liqueur. It's called B&B, &B, Benedictine, and something. I don't know. I tried it once. I was not a fan, but he likes it and that's what he drinks at bedtime. But he puts it in a glass with ice and she says, yeah, his hand gets really cold. He needs a cup cozy. And I think she was just sort of being funny. I don't think she actually anticipated that I would make him a cup cozy, but I decided to give it a go. And so I used Jen's pattern and I just made it shorter. You know, it's about three inches tall. I am assuming that their glasses are a pretty standard rocks glass size. I don't know that for sure. This is the only actual, like, I guess this is a rocks glass or a cup, I don't know. There's a story to this glass. I will be heartbroken someday when this glass breaks, which it's already got hairline cracks underneath the, um, these pictures. I don't know, however they're put on. Anyway, this was one of a set of four that my mom's former husband who passed away several years ago, he had. And I just always remember, as soon as I would get to their house, he'd be, Lisa, you want a drink? <laughs> he would offer me a drink when I was hardly in the door. And it was always in these glasses. And I just have such a fond spot for these glasses. They remind me of Ralph. And so when he passed away, my mom was like, well, you know, is there anything particular of his you want? And I said, I want those glasses. And she says, there's only one left. They've all broken, but I have it. And I pull it out on special times. Often it's like on Friday nights. If I've had a rough week, I'll be like, Ralph, let's have a drink. <laughs> I'll pull this out. And then I wash it by hand as soon as I'm done. And I put it back in the china cabinet because I am just so, I know it's going to break someday. I know it is. But I'm trying to make its life as long as possible. Isn't that crazy? Okay, I'm going to go put it away right now so I don't accidentally break it here, and then you'll see me cry. Okay, <laughs> so I made two of those, 
And this was out of a skein of Here We Go in my cozy base that I've had stashed away because there's a little imperfection in the skein. I actually, I made the beer bottle cozies out of the same yarn. Um, and I had another skein of it, so I just made them some glasses, glass cozy, cup cozies. So the one is stretched out a little bit. They're actually the same size, but I've been trying it on glasses. And I was putting it on a couple different glasses. The other one's just our regular drinking glasses. So it's stretched it out a little bit. But again, I'm hoping that it'll work on, on their glasses. I don't remember what glasses they have. Whatever. So anyway, I did a couple of those, and those were really fun, and they were pretty quick. And um, again, it's expanding my crochet skills because I've never really done, I don't think I've really done this kind of a round start and then turning it up, you know, to make sides with anything crocheted before. I think I've tried to do that just on my own without a pattern and then failed. <laughs> but it worked out pretty well. And I also have a work in progress based on this pattern that I'll show you in a little bit. So, <laughs> teaser. Okay, the only other finished object that I have, oh, and I used a D hook for that. I think the pattern was said to use an E, but again, I felt like, oh, I think I'm a, a loose crocheter, so I went down to a D. Um, it was fine for that, though. I don't think it was a problem. So my work's in progress. Here, I need to... I do have my Ramona cardigan started. So you heard me talk about that last time. I had bought the Briggs and Little Heritage, I believe the base is called, in this beautiful red. Oh, I'm just loving this red so, so much. And I started the Ramona cardigan, which let's see if I can find a picture of it to show you. I didn't print out the front page. Okay, so here it is. That is the Ramona. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying working with the yarn. Now I will say I modified right off the bat just by going down needle size. Um, they have you working with a US 9 and I am doing it on, what am I using? Six. Am I using a six, really? Wow, I am. Hmm. So that's quite a drop. However, I'm getting gauge. Now, I don't know if I'm getting row gauge, and I never worry about row gauge too much, which I know is not good, but I can fudge row gauge much more than I can stitch gauge. So here's what I've got so far. I'm halfway through the um, Raglan Shaping Part 4. <laughs> there were several sections ahead of this that were only a couple rows each really or two three or like two or four rows each so i'm now you know going down and at the end of this section i'll have all my raglan increases so i i have been holding it up i mean obviously there's not much to try on quite yet but i really love this detail can you see this garter stitch detail if you can hear that noise that's our cat winnie she does this reverse sneeze thing that the vet just said it's fine it's nothing but it just sounds so funny when she does it anyway so yeah that's coming along um i just have to remember on the pearl side to actually knit this stitch in between on all four of the raglan spots and there have been a couple times that i've forgotten so then when i was on the right side i had to drop down and fix it it's not a big deal but i really enjoy it now this yarn if you've never worked with it. It's a very wooly wool. It's very toothy. Um, it's not scratchy. Like, I think I'm going to enjoy wearing it. It's no worse than a lot of other, you know, wooly wools that I work with. But it's very, very grippy. Like, as I'm working, I've had to work towards tensioning my yarn differently um, than I normally do. Because when I, I knit Continental, and so when I'm working, I usually tension my yarn by... Just, I wrap it around my hand twice. I know some people do really intricate stuff. I don't. This is how I tension my yarn. Two times around my hand and then around my finger. But if I do this, these two strands of yarn just grip onto each other and do not want to move. So I've had to only tension it once, which is actually how I hold yarn when I crochet. Um, but then I also have to work to make sure that I'm maintaining enough tension 
um, rather than too much. So it's been a little bit trying in that way, but I keep checking my gauge and I seem to still be getting the right gauge. Plus from my swatch, I know that this yarn poofs up, it blooms whenever you soak it at the end. So like it might look a little daylighty through there. Here, I'll put it, ah, oh, there we go. There's a reason to have that there. Um, you can definitely see this through the stitches, but I think once it's blocked, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be very, very warm, oh my gosh. And unlike a super wash yarn, if you knit it this openly, it's going to really have trouble holding its shape. This yarn is gonna hold on to itself pretty well. I'm not worried about it. So again, it's just a little slow going because of the tensioning issues, but I'm enjoying it. I, I'm very much looking forward to, to having the sweater finished to wear. So that was my one whip. Okay, the other one. Now again, this is going back to this ball band pattern. You start doing that rounded bottom, okay, which basically you have six increase points that you're working. And then the number of stitches that you're working in between the increases increases with each round. So I have been wanting to make a mat to put on I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. Can you see? There's a Lazy Susan right there on our table, which just holds a lot of, well, it holds a candle and a bowl with knitting accessories and a pen and a notepad, you know, a sticky notepad, like little stuff. It just has it on there. But for whatever reason, it started rattling recently. Like every time you move, like you can hear it, it's rattling. It's making me crazy. So I thought I need to make a pad or something and I was gonna quilt one, but then that means I have to figure out how to quilt something round and I didn't wanna, I just wasn't in the headspace to do that. I mean, I know how to quilt round things. I've made tree skirts and stuff before, but I just didn't really wanna drag all that stuff out. So I thought, you know what, after I did this, I could just do this bottom, not move to the side part and just keep making that round bit bigger. In theory, this should work, right? And I figured if I'm working with six increase points, theoretically, you're ending up with something that's six-sided. Now, these look fairly round, but you can see points there, like especially where the colors, you know, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six sides. So I started one. <laughs> and I've started it many times now. And this is all I've got because I have had to rip it out at least four times because somehow I keep ending up with five sides, not six. And so then I rip all the way back to where I have the six sides. So like right here, there are six sides. You can't really see them super well defined at the moment, but here's a point, 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 here's a point. So there are six sides. Do you see that? They... <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm not good at reading crochet the way I am with knitting. Like I can read my knitting very well. Reading crochet is harder for me. So I don't know what I'm doing, but like the math of it seems pretty straightforward. I was even telling Bill about this and he's like, yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, I'm gonna keep at it because I really, really want this as a finished object. It should be done by now. In fact, I'm gonna finish it today if it kills me because it'll be my last project I can submit for the pigskin party if I finish it today. But um, here's the yarn I'm using. Isn't it pretty? I expected there to be a lot more of this pink at the beginning, but there's not. I guess it kind of changes as you go through it. So I'm hoping I get to this pink. This is a skein of, I don't have the band here. I bought this on a whim last year, shortly after all the lockdown stuff started because I wanted to support um, a local yarn shop that had moved a lot of their inventory online or they were working to move their inventory online so people could still shop. And so I bought this without actually realizing what it was. This is made by Cascade Yarns, which if you have followed over the past few years, you know there's problems with Cascade Yarns. Some of the stuff that has been said in social media that is just not very nice um, in, with regard to some social issues. Um, and so as much as I love Cascade Yarns, you know that it's one of my favorite yarns I've made sweaters with in the past. 
I haven't really been buying it just because there are a lot of other yarns I could buy. But I saw this one and I love the color and I bought it and it was called Paradigm, Paradigm Shift. And I think that's what I saw anyway. So that's what it is. It's a mercerized cotton worsted weight. I've got two big balls of it because they're 100 grams. Like, I think they're 100 grams. Maybe they're even more. They're, they're weighty. Um, and I didn't really have a plan when I bought it. Again, I was just trying to support the yarn shop. And she didn't have a whole lot of other yarns online that, like, I really felt like I could use. But I can always make dishcloths and things with cotton. So that's why I bought it. Anyway, so this is my tiny little pad. Hopefully it grows up to be an actual pad for my, for my, uh, Lazy Susan there. I'll get it. I'm, I'm bound and determined to figure out what I'm doing wrong. I'm doing a lot of counting. And anytime somebody walks in while I'm counting, I give them... <laughs> or you start counting out loud, really, you know, really loud. Very determined. Six! Seven! <laughs> all right. Those are all my works in progress. Um, coming up... Theoretically, I have a couple of other knitting projects I would like to start, but I'm going to hold off because I've got a sweater I really want to see get finished. This is going to be finished before the end of today. Now, I told Emma I would make her another hat like mine, so hopefully, I might try to make that this week though, just I can give it to her for Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, I, I mean, I've got projects. I've actually got yarn wound for a shawl. But I don't think I'm going to start it because I have the feeling if I get into that and I really like the pattern because I'm not 100% sure I'm going to like the pattern. But I feel like if I do get into it and like the pattern, then that's all I'm going to want to work on. And I keep getting sidetracked by other things rather than working on the sweater. So I feel like I should be further ahead on that sweater than I am. <laughs> As you can see, my loom has still not been warped. So I've not been doing any more warping or weaving. Um, and I have not been spinning, although that has not stopped me from purchasing fiber. I just bought a bunch of fiber last night from Hip Strings. If you are familiar with Hip Strings, they're actually a Pittsburgh-based indie dyer as well. Um, and they're moving their warehouse, their, their space to a new location, so they're having a sale. So if you would like to see some beautiful yarn and or fiber, check out the Hip Strings website. I don't know how long the sale is going, but I think it's probably... Hopefully at least as long as it takes me to get this podcast up. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. Let's talk about the nature make-alongs. That's what I've decided to call them. Just going to call them the nature make-alongs. All right. I'm going to run down through all of the stuff. I have it all on the back of this piece of paper. It will all be up both in the Ravelry group in a thread as well as in a blog post on the Fiber Nymph Dye Works website. Um, the blog post will be pinned to the top of the blog page so you will be able to see that. Um, anyway, so here we go. Ready? I'm going to go through this quickly, but again, you'll be able to find it all written out in those two locations. The Nature Along, the Nature Make-Alongs, that's what I'm calling it. They're going to run in four two-month blocks. So there's going to be one March, April, then May and June. We're going to take July off, and then we're going to do July or August, September, and then October, November. Each one is going to have a nature-oriented theme. The first one, May, March and April, will be flora. So anything planty and leafy. Um, May and June will be fauna. So that's all the critters. July is off. August and September, we're going to go and focus on the sea. And then October and November, we're going to focus on the sky. So those are the four themes that we're going to work through those four blocks of time. These make-alongs, I'm calling it a make-along rather than a knit-along because it's going to be open to knitting, crocheting, spinning, and weaving. So anything that you can do with yarn, basically, in a measurable form. I mean, punch needle is also something you do with yarn, but not so much in a way that you can weigh your finished project and know how many grams of something that you've used. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, here are the details. Your projects have to be started and finished within each of those two month time frames. The project somehow has to relate to that theme. 
So in March and April, whatever project or projects, you're welcome to do more than one, you do, it has to somehow relate to flora, whether that's the name of a pattern, whether it's the name of a colorway that you use, whether it's a motif within what you're making, it just has to relate somehow. If you can sell it to me, <laughs> it's okay, um, to each of those themes. Each project to qualify as a finished object for a prize um, needs to be at least 50 grams of yarn or fiber. And if it's fiber, then ultimately it's going to be yarn when you're done spinning it. So um, at least 50 grams. Um, you can submit as many finished objects as you want to within each two month period, as long as they you know, meet all of those qualifications. Um, and each one will be an entry. So you're going to create a new post in the finished objects thread for each individual finished object that you end up with. There will also be a chatter thread so that we can enjoy each other's chatter about what we're making. And then at the end of each two month period, I will draw a winner um, both from the chatter thread and from the finished objects thread um, at the end. So there'll be two winners per period. Now here's an addendum to that. There's an additional component. And this is the part that's sort of taking the place of a monthly makes program this year. It's nothing like monthly makes, just so you know, at least not much. Um, it's not nearly as in-depth, but it's my way of offering something to those of you who really want to focus on working with your fiber and dye works, yarn and or fiber, and want the chance to win and or earn fiber and dye works yarn. Um, so the component for Fiber Nymph Dye Works is your projects that you do that have to be a minimum of 50 grams must be all made out of Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn, okay, if you want it to count towards the Fiber Nymph Dye Works component of this make-along. Um, if you're doing multiple projects each period, you don't have to do all of them in Fiber Nymph Dye Works, just the ones that you want to count towards the Fiber Nymph Dye Works prizes need to be all fiber and dye works yarn or fiber. Um, the finished objects will count for a second prize drawing if you've done them all out of fiber and dye works. So you'll have, you'll be in the main drawings that I just described, but then you'll also be in a second prize drawing um, for your finished objects that meet those qualifications plus are all made out of fiber and dye works yarn. How many times can I say fiber and dye works in this podcast? My gosh. Okay. Um, and that will just be from the finished objects thread. That's not a second entry into the chatter thread. If you, here's the last part. If you submit 200 grams worth of qualifying finished objects in each of those four make along periods, so that would be a total of 800 grams minimum, all out of fiber nymph dye works, yarn or fiber, then you will earn an exclusive colorway that I'm going to dye at the end of this whole program um, just for the people who meet that final criteria, the 200 grams per period of projects. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I went through that fast. <laughs> if you have questions, please feel free to ask them. The other component to this is I'm not going to, like the chatter thread will be on Ravelry. I'm trying to see how, how I can, well, you know what, you can also chat in the blog post on the Fiber Nymph Dye Works blog. I'm going to combine all of those for the chatter. So if you can't access Ravelry, you can still chatter in the blog. All right, so that's how I'm doing the chatter part of it. As far as the submissions for finished objects, that I'm a little bit, I'm still not 100% sure how I'm going to do that, but I am going to make it accessible to everyone. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I'm still working through that detail yet, um, how the best way will be to do that. So stay tuned, but that is the down low for all of the rest of the details for this. Um, if you have any questions, again, I'm sure I probably went over something that I didn't say fully. I'll be happy to fill you in, but um, there you go. Nature Make-Alongs 2021. Okay, hot.
had to lose the shawl. It's, the sun is coming in towards me now. It's very warm. Alrighty, let's get back to things. We are going to go to a drawing. I was privileged to be able to contribute yarn for the making of a book, which is called Knit Happy with Self-Striping Yarn, Bright, Fun, and Colorful Sweaters and Accessories Made Easy by Stephanie Lotvin. You might have seen this being talked about on social media over the past couple of months. It was published in December, and I was so happy that she asked me if I would be willing to contribute some yarn for her one of the patterns. And the fun thing about this book, well, there's many fun things about this book, but it's all patterns that are not socks. So it's all self-striping things that you can do that aren't socks. And, sorry, I need to find, here it is. Um, the Sideline gl Glance Hat is the one that, that is my yarn. That is my Positivity colorway, which was my anniversary colorway two years ago, <laughs> I wanna say, and, along with some eggplant semi-solid. So this one takes two colorways, and I think that's so much fun because you're working this part of it, you know, long ways, and then you like, seam it and then do that bit. I just thought it was so much fun. So anyway, I would love to be able to share this with you. I mean, there's just so many fun projects in there. There's cows, um, shawls, here's a shawl. Ooh, that one's really cool too. There is, she, um, if you, this name sounds familiar, Stephanie Lotvin, she's Telly Bean Knits. She's the one who did um, this sweater, the sock arm sweater. And so this is the sock arm sweater, except it's a cardigan. So it's the ver cardigan version of it in the book. And then there's a kid's cardigan. There's another little baby. Oh, this one's fun. I just had somebody order yarn specifically for this. Isn't this fun? That is called Bright Axis Tea. So anyway, um, Lots of fun patterns in here. So I am going to do a drawing for the book as well as two skeins of yarn. And yes, yes, this is sugar plumbed. I'm not dying this anymore until next year, but this is a chance for you to get it. So here's a skein of sugar plumbed on cozy worsted weight, which is the yarn that that pattern will take, as well as Merlot that goes with it. So you can make that or you can do whatever you want with it. But this is what the drawing will be for. I'm going to be opening how am I going to do this? Do I want to open a thread in Ravelry? No. I'm going to do this in the comments here on Instagram. On Instagram. Holy cow. No, it's not going to be on Instagram. To enter for this prize, leave a comment in this podcast, okay, for this podcast, and tell me what is something other than socks that you would like to try to make with self-striping yarn. It could be something from this book if you can, if you've seen one of the projects in here, or it could just be anything. Like what is something, some specific type of project that you would like to try making with self-striping that you've never made before? That's going to be the prompt. So anybody who answers that prompt in the um, comments for this video will be entered into the drawing and I will do the drawing before I record the next episode, which will be in a week and a half to two weeks probably. Okay, moving along to the state of the studio. What's going on in the shop? Um, I will be having a very, very small Valentine's update tomorrow, Monday, February 8th at 5 p.m. Eastern. I know it's super close to Valentine's Day and I apologize for that. Um, it's just not worked out well for me to be able to do a large Valentine's Day update earlier than this. So hopefully um, if you order on Monday, I'll get it shipped out Tuesday and hopefully you will have it by Valentine's Day if you'd like to do a cast on um, or you'll at least have it in your stash and you can use it. There are only going to be two Valentine's Day colors available though. So the first, and they're both ones that I have done before. I did not come up with a new colorway this year. The first one is Love Letters, which was new last year. 
Um, and everybody really liked this one. And this is how it knits up. This is a sample of it on Mountain House, or on, why do I keep calling it Mountain House? <laughs> Mountain Tweed, Mountain Tweed BFL. Um, and so I have it on Bounce and Mountain Tweed. I have it on several other bases as well. Um, I think all together I have 12 skeins of it on different bases. So that's what there is, sorry. Um, I will say this year's version dyed, this one color here, dyed up a little brighter than it did last year. Here it is last year. So it is a little bit brighter. It's the same color, but it's just a little bit brighter. So you'll have that. <laughs> that happens. Um, okay, so that's the first one. The other one is the biggie, the seven stripe or the seven color multiple stripes beyond that um, pattern and that's Candy Hearts. And I also have 12 skeins of that um, that will be up in the shop. There will be four bounce, four Mountain Tweed BFL and four Bedazzled. So those will be in the shop Monday night too. I'm going to do my best to get this podcast up in plenty of time for you guys to see this, but I'll also be sending out a newsletter so you'll definitely know, even if you didn't get to see this ahead of time. So that's going on Monday. This Thursday, I am going to be starting up my Throwback Thursday little pop updates um, where every once in a while I offer an older colorway that hasn't been in the shop for a long time. And this Thursday, it's going to be my Cake Pops colorway. I don't have a sample of it to show you right now. I'll try to be able to put one up here. Um, it's a two striper with um, the chocolate brown stripe and then the bright, fun, sprinkly speckle stripe. So that will be this Thursday's um, yeah, this Thursday's Throwback Thursday colorway. And then I will be doing the update that has the heavy yarns, um, which is my mega um, bulky weight. Yes, I'm stabbing myself with a crochet hook, sorry. <laughs> mega is a bulky weight. Twist is a non-superwash um, worsted weight that has the dark and the light colored wools in it. So I have heavy yarns, self-striping, that will be there, and as well as I'm hoping to get some cozy inversibles up, because I've been doing those for some wholesale orders, and they've been a lot of fun. Um, you can do mittens and hats and, you know, anything with inversibles. Um, so I'm going to try to put some of those up as well. I'm planning on having that update on Saturday, February 20th at 10 a.m. My goal this year is to try to do two updates a month, um, one being a Friday evening, another being a Saturday morning, and then have my throwback Thursdays occasionally in there too. That's, that's my goal. Um, and March, just to give you a heads up, I will have a new Pi Day colorway coming out this year, and I will be having my 10th anniversary, either colorway or colorways. I keep going back and forth. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. I'll be honest. I've got multiple ideas, and I just haven't settled on one yet. So we'll see. But that's what's going on right now. Um, okay, lastly, we've got my favorite things of the week, which I'm going to limit it to just one because I've been talking a really long time. I'm really enjoying my drawing. <laughs> I brought my notebook back out to show you again. I don't know why, because it's not like, I don't know. I'm just really enjoying it. Um, a lot of it I've morphed towards taking quotes or things I've read or a line of something I've heard and starting with the words and then doing drawing around it like like this quote this is a John O'Donohue quote and um, you know just kind of being creative with with my writing I don't know how to do actual calligraphy I don't really care to learn but it's fun to, I like doing pretty writing and just playing with it and I'm playing with the different pens because oh my gosh I've purchased way too many pens <laughs> lately there's no such thing um, this was my did I show you this last time I don't remember my mantra last week enjoy the process of doing of being bad at things I was gonna say of doing bad things that's not what it says at all totally different mantra um, and then like February 1st, I'd said, oh, I'm going to do one every day. I haven't done one every day, but some things it's taken me more than one day to do also. So this was February 1st. 
And I just, it was sort of some journaling that I did in there, some intentions for February. And then I also, inside the block letters, I wrote out um, a few verses from 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. Um, you know, the love is patient, love is kind chapter. That's a favorite of mine. Um, what else have I done? And then some things are just sort of rather random. Remember to consider the whole picture. What else? Then, this is a quote, C. Joy Bell C. I don't know who that is. You will find that it's necessary to let things go simply for the reason that they are heavy. And so I had this idea of drawing like all these heavy things down here, which are kind of funny because they're just not to scale whatsoever. But, you know, I'm just playing with it. And then sometimes I have the words and I think, oh, I really want to do a page based on those words, but I don't have time to do the actual drawing part. So I just get the words down. And um, I'll come back to it. And then yesterday, I instead of going back to that, I did this. This was, and I'm not done with this page, but this was um, prompted by an exercise that we were given in the that seasonal course that I'm taking. Um, the exercise was actually to draw 30 circles of the same size on a page and then use each one to create, to draw something, turn it into something that is actually a circle. I basically threw those directions out, out of the window and just drew circles. <laughs> uh, they are all the same size because I do have compass. Um, and then I'm just sort of doing random designs inside of them. It's so relaxing. It's just so relaxing. I get lost in it. And I have to every once in a while catch myself and, from thinking I'm doing this wrong. Like there is no wrong. There's your way of doing it like you're having fun doing it i'm having fun doing it like it doesn't have to be a particular way and i have to keep reminding myself of that so it's been fun i'm enjoying it and that's all that matters so that is my favorite thing from this week and i'm gonna go now because this has been a very long episode um, again, I will have details and show notes in the drop down menu as well as in the Ravelry thread and in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works blog. I will have all of the details for the Nature Mals in um, the blog and the Ravelry group and the drawing. I will have the prompt for the drawing. Obviously, I told you what it is, but I'll have that in the show notes and your entries need to go in the comments here on this video. And that's what I will do a random comment picker from um, before the next time I record. So I hope you are having a lovely February so far. Um, hope you're getting some warm days if you're in cold weather like us. I think we're going to get some more snow this week. It's getting a little old, but that's okay. I'm trying not to rush the year. We're, my daughter and I are just thinking warm thoughts as we think about <laughs> spring coming soon. Um, yeah, I hope you're finding moments of joy, moments of time that you can just enjoy something for the sheer pleasure of it, not because you need to do it a certain way or you need to worry about perfection, um, just as a gift to yourself to have that time, even if it's only five minutes in your day. And like if you're the parent of small children, you may not even have that five minutes to yourself every day, even if you just have two minutes, like just even just take it to breathe, like do some deep breathing. Deep breathing is really cleansing. Like even three breaths, like even one breath, like there doesn't have to be a certain number. Just do something every day for yourself. Even if it's just taking one deep breath, do it for yourself. You will be happy you have done it. I promise. Have a wonderful time in whatever you're doing until the next time I talk to you. Bye.